Hello, this is John Cresswell. Uh, this is another video in the series on understanding mixed methods research. Uh, the title of this particular video is How to Write a Mixed Method Study for Publication. There are four points that I want to make in this presentation. I want to talk about finding a suitable journal for publication, the types of mixed methods publications that you could present to different journals, uh, some general writing issues and how to compose a mixed method study for publication, and finally how to match your writing structure to the type of design. So if, let's first talk now about the uh, types of journals that are out there and available for mixed methods research. Uh, they're, they're kind of divided into ser several categories for me. The first category would be journals that are exclusively devoted to mixed method studies. And there's at least four of them, and more are obviously being developed today. But the four that I would put on my list, you can see here the Journal of Mixed Methods Research, the International Journal of Multiple Research Approaches, which is an online journal, Field Methods, which is a journal that came out of anthropology, and the Journal of Quality and Quantity, which is a, a British journal. The second category is, would be journals that frequently publish mixed method studies. And we see a lot of, of, of mixed methods projects in these journals, such as the International Journal of Social Research Methodology, Qualitative Inquiry, Qualitative Research, and even some of the medical journals like the British Medical Journal, BMJ. The third category would be journals that I see as being friendly to mixed methods research. Now this list of journals is growing all of the time. Some that come to mind immediately would be the Annals of Family Medicine, the American Educational Research Journal, uh, even journals in cardiology like Circulation, and many other health and social science journals. These are journals that are publishing mixed methods studies uh, and discussions about how to do mixed methods research. That leads me to the different types of mixed methods journal articles that you could write. The first type would be a methodological, what I call a methodological article, and that, that would be a journal article where you discuss how to do mixed methods research, how to do data analysis, how to collect data, how to utilize different designs, methodological pieces. The second would be a slight variation on that first category, a methodological journal article with specific examples. For example, I wrote for the Journal of Traumatic Stress, and the first part of that methodological article talked about what mixed methods research is. It went through a number of topics, um, a definition of mixed methods research, why the term mixed methods is used, uh, the benefits of using it or the value of using mixed methods research, some of the challenges, examples of types of studies that use it, kind of a, an overview to mixed methods research. But then the second half of that article talks about specific mixed methods studies in the trauma research area. So this to me would be a, a mixed methods article that's half methodology and half examples, and usually the authors bring in three or four examples to illustrate how mixed methods is being applied in a field. The third type of article is an actual mixed methods empirical research study uh, that addresses an important problem or issue, and it could be in sociology or psychology or family science or uh, primary care or nursing research. But here's where the subject matter of the article is on a content topic in the field and the researcher uses mixed methods as the methodology for conducting the research. So this is an empirical article. It, these are the most frequent types of articles that came into the Journal of Mixed Methods Research uh, that I co-founded in 2007. I think over a period of about three years, I must have read at least 300 empirical articles. 
where people had applied mixed methods of research to a particular topic studies. They were by far the most popular type of article that came into us. These would be empirical studies of a particular topic where in a particular field like psychology or sociology or nursing research where the person applied mixed methods research. Uh, my task as, the, as one of the editors was then to decide if it was a mixed methods project and whether I should send it out for review by our review board with the journal. So I thought I might mention a couple of the aspects of mixed methods that I was particularly looking for to see if it was a mixed methods project and worthy of review. One, of course, is to look at whether the article included both quantitative and qualitative data. So I would go into the method section and look for the specific types of both forms of data being collected by the researcher. And then secondly, because mixed methods is the integration or the combination of quantitative and qualitative research, I looked for integration passages, places where the authors intentionally brought together the quantitative and qualitative research. Uh, this, sometimes this was found in a methods discussion, sometimes in a results discussion, sometimes in the final conclusion or discussion passage of a journal article. The next thing I looked for was whether the researchers seemed to be familiar with mixed methods research. Did they cite recent books? Did they cite recent articles? Was their literature up to date that they presented? So I was very concerned about the literature. And th so those three things, whether they're using both databases, whether they're integrating them, and whether they were familiar with the mixed le method literature and actually positioning their study within the mixed methods field. Now beyond that, there were some other things that I began looking for such as what was the reason for bringing in qualitative and quantitative research. So this is the rationale passage. It's very important in published studies, mixed method studies. I was curious as to whether they put mixed methods in the title to clue the readers into this particular methodology being used. And I was also interested in how rigorous their various mixed methods features were. Did they have rigorous quantitative methods, rigorous qualitative methods, did they have a mixed methods research question? Did they use some of the more advanced analysis procedures like joint displays? So this was kind of the list that I used to determine whether an article should go out for review. Now beyond this, there are certain writing, general writing considerations that I think you might want to consider as you put together a mixed method study for publication. First would be word length. In some journals, the word length requirements are very uh, brief. That is, it needs to be a manuscript with 3,000 to 6,000 words. And uh, especially this is the case in the health sciences. Uh, when we started the Journal of Mixed Methods Research, we had a word length of 10,000 to 12,000 words, which translates uh, roughly into about a 30 to 35 page double spaced typed manuscript. Well, this was a luxury in the publishing world to be able to put forward a manuscript of that length. So you need to think about the word length being required and if, if you're working with a journal that has a reduced word length such as 3,000 to 6,000 words, how you're going to shorten that manuscript. And typically the way you do that is you start putting in more tables, more figures, you reduce the methods discussion, you might even focus on just the quantitative results or the, qua the qualitative results and put your uh, results section around those components. So there's some ways to begin to reduce the overall length of the manuscript so it will fit some of these journals that have uh, strict requirements about word length. Another thing to think about in terms of publishing a mixed methods would be how many different separate mixed methods publications can you put out from a particular project. For example, I could see in a mixed methods study three publications. First there would be the quantitative aspect of the project that could be published separately. Secondly, the qualitative aspect. And finally, an overview a mixed methods project that could be uh, a summation of the entire mixed methods project. 
There are different ways that you can publish mixed methods. Some authors will begin writing about this. For example, you might find a journal where you could put in multiple mixed method studies in the same issue. Or you could uh, present your main findings and then put a lot of the methods offline on an, uh, an offline uh, resource space uh, that the journal might have. So there are alternative ways of publishing a rather lengthy mixed methods project. One thing, another thing to think about when you're putting together this article would be to be sure and educate the reader as to what mixed methods research is. So as you begin writing in the methods section, you might begin by defining mixed methods research, pointing out its core characteristics, and uh, perhaps talking about some of the design possibilities. Also important along that same line would be having references that cite current books on mixed methods and current journal articles so the reader can at least look at some of these other resources to help educate themselves about what mixed methods research might be. Well, let me talk now a little bit about another facet of writing for publication, that is organizing the writing structure, what I sometimes call the architecture, or the composition of an article, to match the type of design that you're using. This is important. And what we need to pay attention to as we think about the structure or architecture of a mixed method study for publication would be how does the author put into the method section and the results section and possibly the discussion section passages that relate directly to the type of mixed methods design that they're using. Well let me give you an example here of what I mean by all of this matching the structure to the design. In this visual you can see this is an explanatory sequential design diagram where the researcher starts quantitatively, let's say they do a survey project, and then they follow up qualitatively with interviews and then draw some interpretation from how the qualitative interviews help to explain the quantitative results. A very typical explanatory sequential design. Well, you would expect to see the flow of the results and interpretation section to actually mirror this project process. For example, the results would start with quantitative research results. It would then go into qualitative results. And then the interpretation would talk about how the qualitative research helped explain the quantitative results. So from the results and interpretation section of a manuscript, you can see how this would mirror the type of design features. So let me take you into some of the major designs. And this is an example of the explanatory that I've just been going over, where in the results section, it might set up this way. First, the quantitative results, then what results are going to be followed up on. And as we know, using this design, those results to be followed up on could be demographic factors. It could be significant uh, results non-significant results, significant predictors, a number of factors could be followed up on qualitatively. Then in the results you would see the qualitative results presented and then finally how the qualitative results help to explain the quantitative results. Now often what you see in these mixed methods projects is that the discussion section mirrors the results section. So in this case I would expect to see a discussion section that is a summary of first the quantitative results, what results were followed up on, the qualitative results, and then finally how the qualitative helped to explain the quantitative results. Well now let's turn to an exploratory sequential design study. What would the structure of that look like? Again we're going to go into the results section and the discussion section. Recall that exploratory sequential design is where we start qualitatively. We explore for a while with some participants, typically gathering qualitative data. We then use those results to actually build something quantitatively, like build a new instrument, or build an intervention, or build a series of activities that would go into an experiment. And then we actually test out that quantitative 
structure that we've built. So we're going to test out an instrument and gather data quantitatively. So the, the flow would be qualitative followed by some type of quantitative uh, structure being developed followed by a quantitative test. So as we look at the results and discussion section, we would expect to see that flow of activities reflected in how the results section sets up. First we have quantitative, qualitative results, then we have quantitative as it applies to developing the instrument or developing the intervention, and then we have a quantitative test of the instrument or intervention. So you can see how qualitative, quantitative, quantitative, this mirrors the exploratory sequential design. In the discussion section we would see a summary that again mirrors that sequence, that flow of activities. First summaries about the quantitative results, then about the instrument or intervention being designed, then about the test, and finally that interpretive part of how this new instrument or intervention helps to better understanding about the problem or how we can now generalize what we learn in our qualitative themes in the first phase of this research. What would the structure of, for a convergent design look like? The, the structure of the manuscript. Again, we'll go into the results and discussion section. Now in the results section, what we'd expect to find in a convergent design project would be a separate section for quantitative research and, a, and a quantitative research results and a separate section for qualitative research results. But then we would probably also see some attempt by the authors to integrate those two databases. It could be in a table, such as a joint display. In the discussion section, we would see a mirror of these steps first quantitative or qualitative results, and then integration. And what we often see in a convergent design manuscript is the integration piece comes in in a side-by-side -side discussion of the quantitative and qualitative. And that would be an actual paragraph or passage in the discussion where the author first says, here were the quantitative results, and then in the same paragraph says, and then also here were the qualitative and they might then take us to the next step and say here's how the qualitative compared to the quantitative. So this would be the architecture or compositional structure for a convergence study. Let me turn to an intervention design. Now recall that an intervention design is when the person conducts a mixed method study that's an experiment. And in this experiment, they either put, they put qualitative data in either before the experiment begins or during the experiment or after the experiment is over. So what would the results in the discussion section look like for such an intervention design publication? I think the results section would start with first the quantitative outcome results. What were the outcome results of the experiment? That's the most important part of this. And then that would be followed by how the qualitative results were put into the experiment and the types of findings that the researcher learned. So in the results section in this intervention design, the qualitative results would then talk about how they flowed into the experiment. For example, if the qualitative data is used after the experimental results are over, the outcomes are being measured, and they're used as a follow-up to help explain those outcomes, then this results section would talk about the qualitative results that help to explain this, the experimental outcomes. There might also be some joint displays that would array the quantitative and qualitative data together. The discussion section would, would reinforce this type of a structure. It might begin with a summary of the quantitative results and then how the qualitative results actually added to, contributed to the intervention. Finally, there is a community-based research mixed method study. Well, here we would see the structure a little bit differently in the, in the publication of this piece. 
the best strategy would be to thread the stakeholder involvement throughout the different aspects of the project. So it would flow throughout. For example, the stakeholders might be involved in helping to decide what the problem is that needs to be studied. And so in the problem section, the stakeholders would be mentioned. The stakeholders could help shape the questions. So there would be some commentary about how the stakeholders were involved in helping to shape the questions. It could be a stakeholder involvement in data collection, data analysis, interpretation, even how the results are disseminated out after the study is over. So uh, the structure for a community-based participatory mixed methods project I see a little bit different than some of the others where the involvement of the community members is threaded throughout the project, not, not just simply in the results in the discussion section. So in summary, when you're publishing a mixed methods study, find a suitable journal. Think about the various types of mixed methods publications that you could organize from your project. Especially consider three publications, a quantitative, a qualitative, and overall publications, uh, overall mixed methods publication. Consider general writing issues such as uh, word length and how you're going to educate the readers as to what mixed methods is. And finally, match the writing structure that you're using, the compositional structure of how you organize, the, especially the results and the discussion section, to reflect the type of mixed methods design that you're using in your study. I hope this is helpful as you pu push ahead now and publish your mixed methods project.